I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I trust that you're ready for the true geekiness that is the Dr. Bill netcast. I have my tablet in hand here, the ViewSonic G tablet. And of course, we're just about ready to roll with the goodness that is, I have to share the screen sometimes, that is the Dr. Bill Show, yes. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Yes. So, first item we want to talk about this week is that I now have a video channel on Vimeo. A Vimeo video channel. Yes. Hard to say, however, that's what it is. And uh, basically, I spiffed up the layout of the screen somewhat at the Vimeo channel. So I'd encourage you to go subscribe. Yeah, you know, I keep asking you to subscribe. I know that there are tens of you out there. Okay, thousands of you out there. And you're sitting there going, wow, what can I do to help Dr. Bill? Well, one of the things you can do is subscribe to all the places you can subscribe to. You know, even if you never go there again, <laughs> it will help me in terms of gaining popularity of the channel. And that's a good thing. So go subscribe. Hit set Vimeo. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me scroll back here. It is at vimeo.com slash channels slash Dr. Bill as it says on the screen right there. So go there, click on subscribe, it's free, and of course it will help out a lot. There you go. Next item, a new nook may be on the way. Yes indeed. Uh, invites to the press have been sent, an announcement is coming, and we assume it will be a new nook. That's Barnes & Noble of course, their it's their e-reader, but you might as well call it a tablet because it really is a tablet, okay? And uh, they're going to have lots of new features added to the tablet, uh, and it's just going to be really awesome. Everybody's getting into the tablet biz. Yes. So I wish them well. Now, this next item was cross-posted from the handheld hack handheldhack.com and yes we are going to do a handheld hack netcast <laughs> as a matter of fact the first one will be out this weekend well first of the week anyway okay of next week so stay tuned there you go um next item comes from the handheld hack. Ubuntu is coming to tablets, smartphones, and handheld devices in 2014. 2014. This is 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. Dude, talk about an announcement that's way ahead of its time. Oh well. Basically, they are developing the Unity UI that's user interface, from Ubuntu, the new Unity inter interface, is going to be used for a tablet and for smartphones and all of those things in terms of handheld devices. Cool. So I will comment further on that on the handheld hack, handheld hack, <laughs> netcast, not hack, no. That struck me as funny. I'm sorry. It just, it did. Okay, next item. <laughs> Please move on to the next item. A new tech news site <laughs> called The Verge. I suppose it's like you're on The Verge. 
of something. And so that's why they call it The Verge. It's basically the people that put out, oh, what do they put out? <laughs> I thought I wrote that in there. Ah, this is my next, yes, this is my next website. Those folks have created The Verge, a tech news website, and it's highly graphical. I've got a, a screenshot of it there with their Welcome to The Verge article and so forth, and it's very graphical, very colorful. So, uh, you know, I'm, I like tech news. So I like the idea of more tech news sites because, frankly, it gives me more resources to find content for this very netcast. Speaking of which, now here's an idea. You, you could actually, my finger gets really long the closer I put it to the, to the camera. That just is so bizarre. Anyway. <laughs> You can help me if you have tech news that you can send me as well. That's really cool. I, li I like that. Whoa! You know, if it was in 3D, we'd really be set, wouldn't we? Anyway. And now a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Always wanted to say that. Anyway, our sponsor, of course, is Citrix Systems. Citrix has an awesome product called GoToMeeting. Now, GoToMeeting now has HD faces. You can see HD. That's the whole 16 by 9 aspect ratio, just like on this show right here. And you can see it using your webcam and using the new GoToMeeting with HD faces. So check out this special URL right here, GoToMeeting.com. Enter the podcast code PODCAST. P-O-D-C-A-S-T, as it says right here, and you will get a free 30-day trial of GoToMeeting. So check that out because it's good. It's awesome. And if you do that and you enter the code podcast, it will help the doctor. So that's awesome. There you go. Next item. <laughs> How cool is this? NASA is working on tractor beams. Dude! tractor beams. And I even have a shot here of the Enterprise tractoring something. Picture the old guy, you know, with his hat on the John Deere tractor. No, different kind of tractor beam. Anyway, can you tell I'm in a strange mood? I'm usually in a strange mood anyway. Just saying. Um, so anyway, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, you know that. And so this really struck my fancy. NASA is studying ways to make tractor beams a reality. This is so cool. And they go into laser-based trapping of things. I find that odd. I didn't know you could actually do that. I mean, that's one technology I would have thought would have been truly science fiction as opposed to science. But apparently it works, or at least in theory it can, so that's why they're working on it. Oh! Yes, the Geek Software of the Week! <laughs> Geek Software of the Week this week is Tint. T-Y-N-T, -T, Tint. So you've got to spell it funny so you can get a URL. Just say So T-Y-N-T, -T, Tint. Now, this Geek Software of the Week, I know, is probably very highly specialized. It's not for everyone, okay? You have to be someone who's developing a website. Mike Johnson, listen closely. Because you do websites, I know. So anyway, as well as do, I'm sure, a lot of other folks. I just happen to have worked with Mike many years ago when we both worked for the county. He still works for the county. Bless his heart. Inside joke. Um, <laughs> so, I've been set free, <laughs> so I don't anymore. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but if you are a website admin, this software is awesome. And I see here's what happened. 
I started going to different websites, and as you know, I occasionally clip information from websites and paste it into the blog at drbill.cc, D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C for computer curmudgeon. And in doing so, I noticed that it would add, at the end of my text that I grabbed, it would add a little thing that would show the URL to the page that I was clipping from. And it said, basically, for more information, go to this page. And I'm like, that's awesome. How are they doing that? So instead of just asking how are they how are they doing that and not getting an answer, <laughs> I hack their sites. No, not really. What I do is I go to my browser, I right click on the screen and say view source. Yes. So then I can look at their source code. And when I look at their source code, I can see what is part of their website, what the software behind it is. And so I saw this <sighs> JavaScript script that came from tint.com, T-Y-N-T.com. So I went to T-Y-N-T.com out of curiosity and found this software. And this is the software I was looking for. The whole idea of tint is that it adds the ability to do this string when somebody cuts and pastes. So if they cut and paste off your website, it adds in the URL from the website. Now, the, the idea of that is, is if somebody reads your content, cuts it, and pastes it into an email, it will put that line, you know, for more information, read, or go to this particular web page, and that transfers the web page address into their email so the people that read the email, particularly if they send it to a group of people, they all get your web address. Cool. That's a great idea. It really is. So it drives traffic to your site, which is, of course, what you want. They also have ways to improve your search engine ranking because whatever the person used, whatever search criteria they used to go to your website, Tint saves that in a... Um, basically in your account on tent.com, which by the way, I, I'm bouncing all around here explaining this, but you can create an account on tent.com either per website, or you can create one account and put all your websites under that account, which is what I decided to do. I, I basically consolidated the different ones that I was creating under one email address, my main email address, and uh, I get these reports emailed to me from all of my websites that I have this on, and it tells me what the keyword search they use to come to the website. And that way I know what meta tags are of more interest, or would be of more interest, if I added them into the website. So I can tweak, I can tweak the site better for SEO, search engine optimization. That's what SEO is. If you ever see the SEO term used, now you know it's search engine optimization. And there's a whole art to that, an art and a science to search engine optimization. And actually, I'm quite good at it <laughs> for my websites. So there you go. Um, but this is just another tool in the old arsenal to allow you to do that. And that's awesome. So if you produce a website, this is really cool stuff. If you don't do any websites, you're just a viewer as opposed to a producer, so to speak, it probably won't mean anything to you other than the sheer interest and curiosity of, boy, isn't it cool that that can be done, you know, which that alone is enough for me. I, I'm a techno dude, and I just like to know how they're doing things, you know, which is why that little tip of right-clicking and looking at their source code, good idea. You can do that. I'd encourage you to do that. Okay. Next item, the Dooku Zero-Day Exploit Safety Primer. Now, basically what this is about is there is a zero-day exploit called Dooku. Now, it's like Count Dooku on Star Wars, except that it's spelled different. It's spelled D-U-Q-U. -U. What? Anyway, everybody's got to have their own weird spelling these days. But anyway, this is a, an evil, evil exploit. This is bad. And the thing is, it's zero day. Now, zero day means it just came out, 
and the virus signature files have not caught up to it yet. Okay, and uh, so your antivirus may not detect it yet. That's bad. So what you got to do is you got to make sure that all your patches are up to date. That is the number one thing to do. Now, Microsoft just came out with this patch. So I don't even know if it's been officially released yet. I'm still kind of scanning the article here to see whether Microsoft really has released it. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Microsoft began offering a hot fix for the threat that blocks access to T2 embed.dll used in the zero day attack in Dooku. Mustache itches. <laughs> the flaw lies in the Win32K true type font parsing engine. Yes. According to Microsoft, an attacker who successfully exploited, exploited this vulnerability could run arbitrary code in kernel mode. That's bad. The attacker could then install programs, view change, or delete data, or create new accounts with full user rights. That's, that's really bad. Okay, this vulnerability is related to the Dooku malware, Microsoft said in an advisory sent today. Jerry Bryant, Group Manager for Response Communications in Microsoft's Trustworthy Computing Group, Trustworthy Computing Group, says Microsoft is closely monitoring further developments with Dooku. As previously stated, the risk for customers remains low. <laughs> they would say that. So, here's what you do. Get that update. Also, run any related anti-malware. Use the best standard safety practices. Uh, when I say run the malware, run the malware detection tools you have, uh, which a good one, by the way, is uh, malware bytes anti malware. That's kind of hard to say, but it's it's a good tool. So download that, get the latest uh, signature file for that, and you'll be good. Then scan or filter Word documents from unknown sources. This comes from a Word document. A lot of people don't realize that Word documents can contain code like this that is evil. So you definitely want to be sure that you check your Microsoft Word documents, particularly if you don't know where it came from, scan them, okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, Jackson suggests filtering Word documents from unknown sources and scanning them with the M-O-I-C-E, moist until there's a patch for the new zero-day attack. Another option is to use something like FireEye software. FireEye loads the Word document inside the VM and executes malicious detection. So it basically puts it in a sandbox to protect you from it. Then you should monitor for traffic from potentially infected machines trying to phone home to Dooku. Be on the lookout for machines that connect to a Dooku command and control center server trying to resolve a Dooku related domain. Two CNC servers have been taken down thus far, but there are likely to be new ones. The IP addresses of the CNCs that were found and ultimately shuttered is 206.183.111.97 and 777.241.93.160. Like you go out and look for IP addresses, but okay. Uh, I'm confident that there are other command and control centers either going up or that are already up. We are a step behind them spotting new ones. <sighs> it's bad. Also watch any port 443 traffic that's unencrypted and keep an eye out for tilde DQ files, not Dairy Queen. Dooku, evil virus. Meanwhile, a Dooku infected file may start with tilde DQ, hit DQ in the Windows temporary file directory, so be on the lookout for that as well, according to SecureWorks. Okay? So do all of that. Now, that's all the items I have for this week. So, we'll keep it nice and short this week, and I'll join you on the Handheld Hack Netcast and the Vertzing Netcast, which I'm about to record soon. So, until next time, remember that the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.